All right. Hi, uh, so this is Carrie Johnston, and I'm filming today on the traditional territory of Champagne and Ajac First Nations, and I'm joined by Patty Baltilli, who's joining us today from the traditional territory of Kwanlin Dun First Nation and on Kuchin Council. Welcome, Patty. Hi, thank you. Good morning, Carrie. So tell us a little bit about what it is you do as an entrepreneur. Well, um, so my name is Patty Balsley. I've been in the North for about 31 years. Um, Today, I'm a Northern and National Management Consultant. That's always elusive. People are like, that's vague, what do you mean? And um, so I specialize in governance, tourism, community and economic development, and I get the privilege of working across all sectors from public, private, nonprofit, First Nations governments and organizations. Um, I, I, I've tried to develop and, and you know, shape or, or flow, ebb and flow my mandate over the years, but I really think it comes down to, I work with organizations to help them achieve their vision or mandate more effectively. And I do that through strategy, training, advice, project management. Um, yeah, I came to the table with um, a very big passion for governance and, um, and seeing how communities and organizations work together. So for 14 years in the Yukon, I was a nonprofit executive and um, today in my consulting practice, I also serve um, the board of Canada's Crown Corporation for Tourism Destination Canada. Um, my skills and experiences working up to that place included the Arctic Winter Games, the Canada Winter Games, the chair of the board of trustees for the Arctic Inspiration Prize with the Rideau Hall Foundation, Taya Canada, so for tourism, and I was um, the vice chair at the Yukon College Board of Governors for seven years. So I get to put all of my experiences, um, governance, um, firsthand frontline and professional development into what I do every day. I, I, I feel resourceful and um, enthusiastic for helping people do what they're supposed to do better. Mm. A lot of what you're talking about there kind of falls into this space of like social innovation and, you know, looking for entrepreneurship and innovation, both in sort of the, the private spaces when we're thinking about tourism, but also in our not for profits and sort of finding innovation in how we do our work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, uh, I've been really inspired in the last five years to see the Yukon rise into that space um, with through Yukon Struct and having speakers come to the territory and support from organizations to allow people to consider or reimagine what an economic model could look like um, that has a very different set of um, outcomes where profit is actually trans transitions to revenue to reinvest in itself so it can continue to prosper, thrive and grow, but in a different way without kind of ownership and, you know, um, private sector ideals and more about community building ideals. I love it. Just going back to one of the, the um, things that you've been helping with or, or supporting was the, you know, a lot of them Arctic Winter Games, those are pretty, there's a little bit more obvious. Could you just tell us a little bit more what the Arctic Inspiration Prize is and what oh, that work yeah. has been? Yeah, beautiful. Um, the Arctic Inspiration Prize is Canada's North's largest philanthropic gift ever. Um, there are two founders, um, Arctic, uh, Arnold Witzig and Sina, Seema Sharafi, and they gave their life's portfolio to Canada's North um, through an organization called the Arctic Inspiration Prize under the guidance and or support of the Rideau Hall Foundation out of Ottawa. Um, so the Arctic Inspiration Prize is intended to inspire Northern opportunity. Um, the tenets of it are, it has to be innovative, it has to be novel, and it has to take something that we already know and take it to the next level. I've, I've heard Arnold say in the past that um, where something may not be fund eligible, but has great Northern impact and greater shared ownership by Northerners, that is where the Arctic Inspiration Prize might come in. So when you think about um, limitations for access to hearing equipment in the Eastern Arctic, the Arctic Inspiration Prize was able to help. Um, as a result, it transfers or transitions a community that has had um, a very long history of children with hearing loss because of ear infections now be early identified and have a, pos a greater chance of uh, positive experience in their education and in their life because of the AIP. 
Um, there are many projects that have benefited from the AIP and it's evolving every day. The magic of it is that it is governed by Northerners and its partnerships are from Northern monies too. So if we were able to raise a million dollars from the North, the Arctic Inspiration Prize would contribute a million. They donate up to three million a year or, or award up to three million a year. Um, but it's really contingent on Northern ownership and Northern partnerships. So I love that. Often our funding programs are informed by people who have never even crossed the 60th parallel. And in this case, it's governed and inspired and managed by Northerners. So it's of the North by the North for the North is Arnold's slogan. Oh, that's fantastic. And yeah, great to see such an entrepreneurial initiative from, from that family. It's fantastic. Totally. totally. Um, so what have you learned about your business model over the last couple of months? I, I imagine right. a lot of what you do is sort of meetings and bringing people together to have conversations about yeah. you know, innovation. So yeah. what have you learned? You know, it's funny. Um, I think my business model has remained the same, but I have had to pivot in response to the state of life for my clients. And so uh, things slowed down. Many things were canceled or postponed. I had a lot of travel outside of the Yukon in my, in my work, and that stuff has either been gone to online or been postponed or canceled. Um, everybody's in the same place. Without a crystal ball, we all, we all need to now more than ever collaborate um, to figure out together how we define what we think we know. Even in tourism, all of our marketing information about our key markets that are coming to Canada or the North their priorities have all shifted. That whole value proposition from a key market is an unknown. So Destination Canada is working really hard with Canadians to articulate um, refreshing all of the data. Um, and we have to work hard to have our economy and our small businesses and our large businesses survive. They create jobs and they pay taxes and it, it, we need everybody together now more than ever. And and the opportunity in this new required collaboration, it's not just, you know, let's partner. It's we really need to think and talk and vision together. And, and the opportunity is to actually work towards building a territory and a nation that we desire. Um, we're, this has been terrible. And the opportunity is potentially really beautiful. So it's, it's, it's tricky. My business model hasn't changed much except a little bit of online uh, I'm slow. I've slowed down a little bit, and I, I like my all my colleagues. We just have to be patient, mm -hmm. reduce our consumption, <laughs> and be patient and and work together. Yeah. What have you learned about Yukoners over the last couple of months? Your clients. Well, um, I, I'm going to say that we uh, we've divided ourselves into a couple of groups, and and the Yukon isn't unique to Manitoba, Canada, or another country. Um, the essential workers never got a break. In fact, they were elevated. Um, people that were not frontline or essential that had jobs had to stay home. And for some, that was like, wow, must be nice to stay home. But then they lose that connection and team and working together and interaction piece. And then there's people that don't have jobs like myself who are self-employed, who aren't an essential worker that staying home as an extrovert and a people person and a hugger, it was terrible. So I see Yukoners thanking frontline workers more than ever and understanding the value of people that are running gas stations and grocery stores and truck drivers. And I see us celebrating those that have had to go into the front lines. Um, I think we've, we've enhanced our compassion. Um, uh, and I still think, I still think our, our values have been either reinforced or altered to strengthen the relationships that we have with family, friends, and colleagues. Um, we have to walk together. And uh, just because I have to isolate um, doesn't mean that uh, I, I'm, and I'm having a lesser experience. It's just a different experience. Um, and I, I think every day about the people who have to wear a mask and stand behind glass and, and ring groceries through or a trucker that has to move goods and services. And you know, before I think truck drivers probably got a lot of slack and aggression because they were big and slow and they took up a lot of space. And today we need to celebrate that those that are moving essential services and goods are putting themselves at risk so that we have milk and bread and medicine. And we just need to be more grateful together. Hmm. 
you spoke in, in sort of your, your career, you've got a lot of leadership positions, talked about sharing mm -hmm. organizations or representing UConn at you know, sort of the national table uh, in your career. So what have you learned about leadership over the last couple of months? Well, um, I have done some work in Canada across kind of private sector and in government, observing and engaging um, with those that are in leadership positions, because many people are looking up and saying, what do we do? What do we do? Where's the leadership? Um, and nobody has, there's no, there, again, there's no magic wand that has the perfect right answer for everybody. I have found that in leadership now more than ever, uh, individuals in those roles are able to say with confidence, I actually don't know. And so I need my people. I need my community. I need my customers to help me describe what it is that we can do and then do the things that we can and then work together on the things that we don't have answers to. Life is different. And I've seen and heard leadership say, here's what I think, what do you think? Before my DMO might have been, here's what I think, we're gonna do this. So yeah, the vulnerability has um, in, been enhanced. I think people have, especially in leader, leadership positions, are thinking differently about compassion and team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so then how are you thinking about your business a little bit differently? Mm. Patience with myself, uh, reaching out as much as I can to my colleagues and clients to check in. How are you doing? I'm reducing how much I spend. Um, like previously, I traveled a lot. So even though that was flow through and I was able to regain that in, in um, my expenses on my invoices, um, all that travel gone. I'm saving some money. I'm managing smaller files. I'm trying to stay positive. Um, uh, yeah, it, without the personal connection and the face-to-face -face contact uh, for myself personally, that has been difficult. Um, but as we're coming out of this first round, or maybe hopefully the only round of the pandemic, um, I think we're going to start to realize that we can gather. We just have to continue to remain respectful to social distancing and you know I'm, I'm getting a few more hugs these days which is filling my spirit but <laughs> that's good and and so what what kind of is your wellness practice you get, kind of gave us a few of those things and, mm -hmm. you know as you expanded your you know your single bubble to your double bubble and got those extra hugs <laughs> but <laughs> what else is kind of making you feel good right well, the first round of it, you know, in March when everything hit, I had, was coming back from Vancouver and I had to isolate for 14 days. Um, in the first couple of days were terrible. I, I knew that people were struggling. I don't often, I'm not often public about my own kind of wellness journey or, or, or struggles, um, but I needed to get nature. And so I started a routine. Uh, the routine included working out once a day for an hour at home and walking in nature for an hour. We are in the Yukon. It's all around us. Um, so the routine thing was really important. Since then, um, I have moved uh, dwellings where I live. And while I'm getting set up, I have lost a little bit of my routine state. So I'm working on getting that back. But nature, bike riding, getting on my paddleboard, those things are essential to wellness. And connecting with people and friends for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have you kind of had any aha moments like where your worldview has shifted a little bit as we faced you know a crisis? Yeah yeah I am um, I'm looking for points of inspiration to help me stay at the front edge of how are people pivoting? What does innovation look like? Even in tourism um, I'd always thought that given this pandemic, those that have assets and infrastructure and products may need to figure out how to repurpose those in a new way. And, um, and we're seeing that, you know, um, uh, Canada Goose uh, went from building jackets to creating a cost recovery only on creating PPE equipment and, and uh, gear to help support those frontline workers. And that's at a very high level. Um, in the Yukon, I've seen small businesses excel in takeout. While they would love to bring back their 40 staff, they're maintaining a staff of nine and their sales are almost as high as they used to be because they're just doing takeout. The sad part is that there's that variance of, you know, 31 jobs that, that didn't come back right away. But I think they will. I think we're going to get back to a place where 
we are more congenial and more grateful for everybody that is in the front lines and we are going to work together to be respectful and 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 grateful and distant and social distant i have um i've had the privilege of of being exposed to and creating friends and colleagues with some amazing people and um, recently i have reread the um, the idea of canada by david johnson um, it's letters that he has created over his term and prior to, um, and I recommend people pick up that book or find it on um, online. It's called The Idea of Canada. Um, it's very inspiring, and David's perspectives to, um, to experiences across the country need to be thought-provoking, and they need to seed our own compassion. Um, I also got a, a recommendation to listen to a series of short podcasts by a man named Goldie Hyder. He's the CEO of the Canada Business Council, and he has a podcast called Speaking of Business, where starting in March, at the tip of COVID, he started doing bi-weekly interviews with leaders across sectors, indigenous business, tourism, manufacturing, trucking, I could go on. Um, and there was always a little gem in there, and he's the interviewer, and he kept them short, and they're really insightful. Even hearing those CEOs across the country share their vulnerability gave me inspiration to how people are thinking and feeling about this pandemic and their world and their families and their, their teams. Um, the final one that I would recommend is, um, I, I, has, I have it as an audio book. Um, it's called The Final Report by Rick Mercer. He is hysterical. His little vignettes are so poignant. Um, it's so funny to listen to somebody talk about how much they love um, Parliament and, and, you know, the legislature of Canada, uh, but facetiously and kind of with an inside voice, pragmatic way of sharing. But at the end, he's added some new essays. And the very last essay in his book talks about how Canada needs to embrace Canada more. And so that's a, that's a beautiful thing. I think, I think people need to hear this book from Rick Mercer or read it and it's called the final report yeah mm. those yeah. are great recommendations yeah thank you any final thoughts on you know considerations the territory should bring to to our reopening and as we sort of think about this re-emergence from this mm. crisis mm. um i want us to continue to work together in a kind way on entering back into a new normal together um, i've seen some disappointing shaming and outing and and that's not helpful um uh there's something that says just because you see me don't see what you goes on inside of me and everyone is walking in a set of experiences that nobody else knows and it's not anybody else's business but shaming is not helpful so i hope that we can respect the changes that we've had to make together with the view to manage and, and keep this pandemic from resurfacing again i think the yukon has been so fortunate and i i think if we can just work together and can better, um, we will have a stronger Yukon. And I, I not actually, I, I wish I had the crystal ball, but I'm not sure what that looks like um, uh, from a small business perspective and how we work together as community. I hope we can be a leader for the nation. Oh, thanks, Patty. Thanks so much oh. for your time today. Thank you for the opportunity. I wish you a great day and a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.